أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة على أهلها رب شرح لي صدري يسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي وصلى الله على محمد وعليه الطيبين الطاهرين I begin this talk with mine in the name of Allah the absolute perfect being he is Rahman and he is Rahim we are talking about anthropology, the nature of human beings and the attributes which are peculiar to the human being. One very important aspect of human existence is the cognition, is the cognitive aspect of the human being. The dimension through which the, the human being knows things acquires an awareness and understanding of things as against the affective aspect of feelings and emotions or as against the active aspect the aspect of, uh, of the bodily actions and uh, the behavior which is uh, carried out apparently by the human being so one is the cognition, the aspect related to knowing and being aware of things. And secondly is the affective, emotional aspect. And the third is the active uh, and uh, apparent as, uh, uh, aspect of the human being through which he uh, carries out uh, various chores and tasks, the behavioral aspect. In this lecture we will be talking about cognition and being aware of things, aware of oneself, aware of others around him, the world, and most important of all, awareness of God. Knowing God, knowing oneself, and through knowing oneself, knowing one's Lord. So what is cognition? What is knowing? What is awareness? And what are the types of knowledge and awareness? This is what we are going to focus on in this session. As far as the definition of knowing, knowledge, cognition, awareness goes, it can be, it, it can be said very obviously that there is no need for an explanation or a definition for this term. The, this, the term knowing, knowledge, cognition, they are very much clear in themselves. These terms, these uh, words are self-evident. They do not require any definition. A term requires a, a definition and explanation when it is not clear in itself. And there are concepts which are more clear are clearer than this concept through which we can identify the unknown concept. When we define things, the definition th which is provided has to use terms and concepts which are much more clear to the uh, listener than the concept which is being defined. And if there is nothing more clear than the concept that is being defined, then that concept does not have a definition, does not require a definition, cannot have a definition. The concept of, for example, the term water, the term, for example, birds, animals, all of them can be defined with more clear concepts. Water is a liquid which is made up of hydrogen and oxygen, two atoms of hydrogen and an atom of oxygen, for example. It can be broken up and an analyzed into its components and defined and explained. 
but uh, there are concepts which don't require a definition, can't, rather they can't, cannot be defined. For example, the term existence, to be, itself is very much clear and self-evident and therefore does not require and cannot have a definition. The same applies to the term knowledge and the cognitive faculty of the human being. It is very much clear in itself for the human being. Basically because one knows himself, the knowledge and awareness of oneself is very much apparent to, uh, to a person. This knowing itself is something which a human being is experiencing all the time. So mostly the human being is aware of himself, if not of anything else. So this awareness is there existing within his soul and therefore he is very much uh, aware of the awareness that he has. Therefore, defining this term and explaining it is uh, without any purpose. So that is the discussion about what is knowledge and what is cognition. Now we come to the second issue. What is the classification of knowledge? Broadly speaking, when we are talking about knowledge and awareness and cognition, we can categorize it into two types. I just mentioned the awareness that a person has of himself, the human's knowledge and awareness of himself. Now, this is one aspect, one type. This awareness is by the fact that one himself is present for himself. The knowledge of himself and his inner faculties, his thoughts, his feelings, he knows them by virtue of the fact they are present for himself, within himself. But when we come to the knowledge of knowing others, other things surrounding him, when he looks at other things, feels other things, tastes other things, using one of the sense perceptions, the five senses, an image of that thing is created in his mind. When I'm looking at the, at the laptop in front of me, the laptop itself is not a part of my mind. It is not coming with its existence into me. Otherwise my mind would blow up. What am I getting to know, how am I knowing, how do I get to know the presence of this laptop in front of me? An image is made in my mind, of course, through the eyes, through the optic nerves. An image of it is created in the retina and it is transferred to the brain and to the mind. Therefore, the knowledge and awareness of this laptop in front of me is due to the image which is being created in my mind. So this is another type, this is the second type of knowledge. One is through the, the first one is through the, uh, the presence of the object which is known through the presence of that object in itself for my mind and I know that object, I am aware of that object because by virtue of the fact that it is itself present in me, within my mind, or the awareness that I have a mind, that I think, that I have thoughts, that I have feelings, they don't require an image to be created and then I am aware of them. They are known through immediate knowledge. There is no medium between the known and the knower. The knower 
the, uh, my mind, myself, knows the object by virtue of the fact that the object is there, present in my mind in itself. So that is knowledge of things through their presence, knowledge through presence, which is immediate knowledge. There's no immediate, immediate image in between. But when it comes to things which are outside my mind, and they are not within my mind and within my soul, I don't uh, things which are beyond me uh, in the material world, and I uh, observe them, and I see them, and I hear them, and I uh, touch them, and feel them, or I sense them through uh, smelling them. In any of these cases, when a thing is uh, observed or known through the five senses, through sense perception, there is no doubtedly, undoubtedly an image created in the mind, and through the knowledge of, through that image, I am aware of the thing which is outside my mind. So the, uh, that image is a window to the outside world for my mind. That window is again present in the mind. The window, I through that window, I ob observe the outside world. I sense I know and I'm aware of the outside world. So when I look through the window, I see the objects which are around me, or I feel them, or I sense them, or smell them, or taste them. And through the image, through that window, I am aware of them. But the image itself, when I want to look at the window itself, the, when I want to observe and sense the, ex, uh, the presence of that window, that image in my mind, that is there, present in itself in my mind. And I know, the, and I'm aware of that presence, and I'm aware of that uh, image because of its presence in the mind. So the knowledge of the window itself is of the first type, immediate knowledge. By virtue of its presence for the mind, it is known by the mind. Whereas in the second case, the, the thing, the object which I know, which is beyond my mind, which is outside my mind, it's in the surrounding world, it's in the material world, and it is sensed through the sense perception, through one of the sense perceptions, the five senses, then an image is created and I know that thing through the image. The image is the median, mediatory between my mind, the known, uh, the knower, and the thing which is known. So the thing which is known and outside is not known directly, it is known indirectly. So it is called immediate knowledge through imagination, through imaging. Now, of course, it follows that if something is known through the mind, for example, I know about Mount Everest. I have an imagination of Mount Everest. I know it is the tallest mountain in the world. But some, someday, because of the movement of the mountains, K2 becomes taller. But I don't know about it. The image in my mind is, him, uh, for example, the Mount Everest is the tallest. It can become wrong. It can become, uh, mis uh, one can be mistaken. So one, what one observes through the five senses, uh, the, five se uh, uh, the image created may not correspond to reality. It may have error in it. One, the human being may err in this, uh, in this knowledge through images. The image created in my mind may or may not correspond to reality. It is uh, possible that it is true or it is false. So a fallacy can be created in knowledge through Im Im images and through immediate knowledge. But when we come to the first type of knowledge, that is by virtue of the presence of something within our minds, and there's no mediatory image in there, there's no 
in a possibility of making a mistake. And possibility of making an error is not there at all. Because the thing is present for us in itself. The known thing is the known thing, the known object itself is there without any immediate image. If the immediate image was there, the immediate image could be wrong. It could not, may or may not correspond with reality, but it is not in the case, as it, it is not the same in the knowledge by presence of the known object. So, uh, summarizing this, in knowledge by presence, you, we have only two things, the knower and the known thing. Where, as in the second type of knowledge, in the type of immediate knowledge, where things are known through images created in our minds, there are three things. One is the knower. The second is the known thing. That is the image which is known directly and the known thing which is known through the image. So we have three uh, things and three existences. One is the knower, one is the known thing, that is the image which is directly known by the mind, and the, through the image, the thing which is outside the mind. Therefore, we said it is possible that uh, a mistake and error is uh, made in observing things which are beyond our mind. But in the first type, there's only two things. Therefore, there's no possibility of making a mistake. Rather, sometimes there's only one thing, the known and the knower is one thing. When the known knower is the mind, the human soul itself, the human being himself, the mind's knowledge of one, uh, the mind itself. So the known thing and the knower are one and only one. The awareness of the mind of itself. So the knower and the known are one and the same. So there's no possibility of error at all. But of course, in the second type of uh, knowledge, that is through presence, there has to be an intermediary, as we said, a mediatory image, and the soul should have the capability and the p potential to, uh, it should be a faculty which is able to create images. Images can be created. There has to be some potential within the mind to be able to, so that the images are imprinted in that um, in the mind and because of that well, the human being is able to know the thing which is beyond the mind. So we can summarize that knowledge is something which is very much evident in itself. The concept of knowledge, whether it is knowledge through uh, images, through um, the mediatory uh, images, it is mediate knowledge or it is knowledge by awareness of, by the presence of the object which is known in itself. It is knowledge by presence or immediate knowledge. Both do not require a definition. They are clear for us, us without any uh, definition required. And secondly, as we have said, broadly speaking, there are two types of knowledge knowledge in its general sense. General, knowledge in its general sense has two types. One is immediate knowledge, one is immediate knowledge. The first one is through the uh, pre presence of the known thing for the mind itself. And the second is through mediatory images which are created in the mind, which, which is a faculty which is capable of having those Im images imprinted in it. And then through that image we uh, are aware of the thing which is outside the mind. To with this, we end this lecture.